Welcome everybody to the Tuesday, February 21st, joint meeting of the Conway Select Board and the Conway Finance Committee. Call the meeting to order on behalf of the Select Board. Um, first item, vote to approve the minutes of February 13th. Did you get a chance to look at them? Yes. Great. Yeah. Great. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Um, there are no warrants tonight. Meetings attended by select board members. Chris. When, when did we meet with? Yeah, last that was, week. Was that last week? Yes, it was. It was okay, so it was last week. The school board meeting. Yeah, after that, and then um, the northeast IT meeting. Um, was there. Good. 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 I'm starting to get their money's worth. Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, the town has been getting their money's worth out of you from day one. <laughs> Proud to say. Erica? None. Now it's been getting the money's worth that. <laughs> Don't do that. So I had I went to uh, all of those meetings except for the IT and uh, had a bunch of other meetings as well. <laughs> um, public comments. Anybody know? Okay, we're still waiting on a third for the finance committee. Oh, oh, Royce here? Wonderful. Okay. So um, if you want to start your meeting, then we can go right to the budget. I make a motion to uh, jointly commence the uh, finance committee meeting and select it. Second. 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 Um, well, just to review since since the trip and since Jane was here first. Well, no, because she oh, has okay. one and I have three. So she should go first. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Um, that's all right. I'm no, I'm not in a hurry. Go first. Yeah. Okay. So there's really no big news on my treasurer and collector budget. Uh, it's slightly down. Um, that's, so, a good, that's a good start. Yeah. That's a good start. Well, yeah, we had some some savings in postage, so you can see my software support went down a little. It didn't actually go down. We had a software company that was providing the mail and the tax bills, and I moved that into the postage, mm -hmm. and then I had a little excess in there, so I didn't I didn't add anything to it in order to do that. So, and it remains about the same. No news. Rory, have you any questions, comments? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, do I have any questions or comments? Well, uh, Jan, yes. the I'm curious. The software support line. Mm -hmm. Okay. Has the vendor are are you being has there been any price increase? Yes, there's a price increase every year. Um, sorry, I don't remember the actual number from last year. If you give me a couple minutes, I can get to it, but they're generally around three to five percent. Okay, so it wasn't exorbitant or anything this year. Nothing exorbitant, nope. Okay, I'm just curious. Other than that, uh, no, I don't have any questions. Thank you, Roy. No problem. We pay for the software. That's why we charge. Once a year, the first July. Okay. Okay. So should I just move on to kind of the seven ten debt service? Uh, I was going to do employee benefits next because that's all right. Or okay. if you want to, I was thinking in numerical order. All right, all right. That, so, that's just a random way of organizing it. So. Which one do you want? Debt service. Debt service. Okay. 
Yeah, so you'll see on there, uh, we have our highway garage note We're in our third year of payment to that. And it's at 53,189. We offset it as per the schedule adopted at the beginning with some free cash for 12,811. And that will be on a article for the time to vote. Hopefully they don't pass that. Um, so if you, you may not recall, but this was initially done to stabilize the debt service amount because loans in the beginning start with uh, a lot of interest and over the years get less and less. So for the first 10 years, we agreed to stabilize that amount with free cash. So, and then uh, the paving note is a new item on the budget. We do owe um, a payment for FY23 that has not been voted yet. So that's gonna be in a separate article. So we're actually effectively paying twice in one year for the paving note. Um, well, twice in one voting session. So at the end of FY23, we're going to be paying the first year, and FY24, we pay the second year. So we're going to have an annual time meeting vote. Uh, it's actually more than that because there's interest. So, um, hold on. Uh, 65,270, is that correct, Bernie? What you have for the article? Sorry? 65,000. The 65 here, up here? No, uh, oh, okay, you have in your notes, yes. So that's for the for the article for the FY23 thing. <laughs> so this, um, you know, constitutes a, a big part of our increase. So we have, a, you know, a new debt payment for the, the paving note. It's only a three-year note, so it's only one more year after this. I'm just uh, curious why it's not budgeted in 23. Um, in, well, in so, so yeah, so we actually went out to borrow at the very end of 22. Mm -hmm. So it was after town meeting, we didn't have a chance to get it in, and we did overlook it for the special town meeting. Still have time to get it in. It would have been an article yeah. then too, yeah. from the same free cash, so it's really no different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. any, any other questions? Just a reminder that this is this is not all of the debt service that the town currently is obligated to this all the, the school stuff as well. Yeah, and then there's uh, 751, which is the interest on those two notes. So only 21,000 for 730. I'm just I'm sorry to be there, sir, but um, 55 or 24. It's principal. That's just principal. Yeah. Okay. So we're not budgeting for interest? We are. So in 751, so we have 751, but 3410 is the interest. Counting wise, we have to get on that work. Yeah. Just turn it. Yeah. Okay. 752 is short term interest. So in there, uh, we have a $1 line item. And we always keep that open in case we were to talk for a short term note. We could transfer money from um, you know, the emergency fund or whatever excess we might have in the department to, to pay for that. So we keep one dollar, keeps the line item open. And then uh, interest payments for tax refunds. That's uh, if we refund after the final abatements, we have to pay eight percent interest on tax refunds when we receive that. So it doesn't happen very often at all. So they keep a small amount for their hand of that. <laughs> okay. Uh, 710. Yeah, oh, sorry, I carried with that. Uh, 900. Employee benefits. We have another big increase here, primarily due in health care costs. 
We do have a couple of extra plans in addition, so it made for a pretty big jump this year, almost $40,000. Mm -hmm. Can you say that again, what was what was the forty thousand? Um, almost forty thousand dollar increase in health care coverage. Um, we have some additional employees. You know that number kind of ebbs and flows up and down depending on how many retirees, how many active employees. I had to add in. I know we're um, going to have another position on the highway department soon, so I have to carry that. You never know how many family plans, how many individuals. So I add on one to what we currently have in January of each plan and hope for the best. Can we get our new rates closed? They're already closed. It's a big, it's a big driver of our budget increases as well for the schools as well. That's really uh, so it was in January sometime when we get that number. No questions on that one? Or you have any okay. questions? I just, uh, these percentage columns. Well, are oh, yeah, that's a good question. So, um, those percentages uh, to the far right are in case we have cost of living increases. Some of the line items are affected. So, Some yeah, are, it's it's only yeah. so our Medicare is affected and unemployment rate is, is affected mm -hmm. and affected and unemployment yeah. is affected. Yeah. And it's really a small amount. Yes. It's totaled on the bottom, 880, 1109, and 1319 million amounts that mm -hmm. could be increased if we have those. Yeah. So, uh, hello. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, as best I could understand here, um, so in FY23, that's this year. Okay, so you're projecting 447 to 474 and uh, at retirement. And those are projections, and we don't even know what they are for this year. Is that that's cor that correct? I'm sorry, I don't quite understand your question. You know what they are. Well, we, we don't know what the cost of living is added to it is. Right. No, no. So I, well, I, well, I'm saying that we there's nothing filled in there for FY23. Is that? Um, oh, yeah. We, it, we don't have that. Yeah, so, we only have so, so we have no idea? I mean, other than what? I mean, there's... So does this does this happen? Um, That's true for everybody's budget, right? There's no, no. Well, no, but you get you know you know what you spend every month, right? Yes, this is one that I had not filled in the expended uh, from um, my okay. spreadsheets. Okay, okay, Vernie. No, just need to know. That's all. Sorry. To... No, I'm glad you pointed it out. I'll I'll remember to add that in. Well, because so, but so in, according to the projections, we're projecting even at a 2% uh, COLA, so we're 765 over 764. Well, that's not too bad. Um, that's if things come in. Yeah, but but again, we're shooting in the dark here for two years, for 23 and then for 24. So, um, so we'll... We'll have to see. I assume you'll fill those in soon, you know, soon, yep. soon, Verney. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'll send it. I'll fill it in for the next time I send it out to everybody. Okay. I mean, it's just such a, you know, this is a big, big, uh, big account here. <laughs> 900. Right. Well, so know. just to be clear, that COLA is only for the benefits end of things. That's not for the COLA for all of for the. Uh, yeah. Yes. That's a very that's, different number. And we are going to have big discussions on that, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah, so that's this number right here. Yeah. And, and can I just ask a question about the prior years? I noticed that we, you know, we kind of over budgeted based on the actual expenditures. It's just, just the, that's just for health insurance, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think, like, like Jen's, I mean, I'm just, my understanding of this is what she said. It has to be set up conservatively so that correct. 
because um, you don't know how many you're going to be using. Yeah, one one additional family plan is worth of twelve thousand so, dollars. Um, probably just the twenty twenty. There was one year I didn't have enough. Yes. So how much would the town save if we switched to HNE instead of details percent? That's a hard question. I I don't I don't really know how to answer that. I we um. You know, every year our group compares ourselves to the benchmarks, which is the uh, GIC health plan, and we're we're leaps and bounds ahead of them across the ways. HNE, you're going to be looking at a deductible plan, um, and you and you won't. The the thing that works so well for us with the group insurance trust is the stability because of the so many members and they're in great financial shape mm -hmm. um, it allows them to partially absorb some of the steep increases and, and so forth we went several years with no increases we've been a couple of years with small increases so we've really done well with them we did investigate uh, maybe two years ago going to maya and what they did is they they matched our rates and everything looked great. And we we're like, wow, maybe we should switch to Maya because there's going to be no increase in the principal and the increase in that year. But they only guarantee it for one year. And after that, it's based on your claims. And where we're such a small town, one or two significant claims could send our rates through the roof. So the stability of this group, um, people are communities are just dying to get into it because it it has very competitive rates and on the side of the employees who use it it's definitely comfortable yeah you know it's nice to know you have insurance that's going to be usable for you as a part yeah it's more widely accepted than you absolutely yeah, I don't as, want to get as this number okay, keeps either. increasing and leaps and bounds beyond the increases in revenues. Um, that, but what people don't understand about when when, when the town selects the, the health insurance carrier, that that is the choice being made for all of our teachers, all of our unionized members, mm -hmm. etc. So we don't we don't see the impact on this, but it has a huge impact and far beyond this. And one of the real only ways that we could ever Reduce the cost of our um, of our high cost unionized employees is to do something with regard to health insurance. That's the one thing that we have the legal authority to do. And you mean by any feedback that you have to do this investment? Oh, they're they're <laughs> they're not going to be happy. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's just my. Yeah, but but um, you know, and in fact, they they. It always comes up every collective bargaining session. They always seek to, they, they always have something in there about guaranteeing that it's going to be the carrier of their choice. Mm -hmm. Eventually, their lawyer sits there and says, No, you can't do that because you're a town employee. Towns, what is that? But it's, it's, it's a huge dollar when you add up all of, all of the health insurance benefits. You get, it's a huge, huge So, and the prediction has long been that it's not a question of if this question of when. We have okay, 75 percent of the uh, premium. We face uh, for the age of all, we pay 70 percent. For the PPO, we pay 60 percent. And for retirees, we pay 50 percent of the retirees. What, what I think might be helpful is if the group someday would take on another plan, like maybe a deductible plan at a lower monthly cost, and employees that are, you know, maybe don't see the doctor very often, aren't worried about the mm -hmm. surgeries or high cost, might take the lower mm -hmm. cost plan, and thus it costs a pound less too. You can sell for sure and you can buy for you. Well, the group is that self insurance. We have to pay money into it, so I'm sure I'm sure we have the portion of what we're doing. The group is that issue. The employees who have to have a higher budget, which seems to be kind of a good 
and getting ahead of that you know, we're walking forward and four years that have adopted this kind of high budget plan. The plan there are any providers out there, who's there out there and you know, help set up pots of money and keep the money to employees because it's more time. Keep in mind that mm -hmm. most people don't have much money saved in cash money, so if you're going to test by a little premium, that's when you have your pockets that are left. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Flip to that, flip side to that period. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on employee benefits? Mm -hmm. um, so the last one I have is a little out of order. Uh, Six thirty, please pardon, right? <laughs> well, there's nothing in here for the law. This is just the budget, which um, we kept the same as last year, eighty thousand. Six thirty. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, it's not on the agenda either. It's up on the screen now. Yeah, that's true. It's not on the agenda. Oh, so you're going to have to come back. <laughs> what say you, Bernie? <laughs> um, well, yeah, we. I'm sorry. Yeah, it wasn't on there. I, honestly, I think somehow in my head it was on on a different day, like done earlier. But maybe I missed that. Um, since there's literally no change, I, I don't know. I don't want to make Jan come back for that. But Well, there is an internal change I want to share with you. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So although we didn't ask for any more money, we actually, you may remember a few years back, there was a big discussion about giving the new sports director a stipend. And um, we decided that we think that's a good thing. And we think that we can fit it in our budget. As you see, like a lot of years, a lot of the money hasn't been spent. So we want to uh, reactivate that stipend at a thousand a year. Um, uh, you know, Tanya, Tanya, Tanya. Yes. We make a very actually trying to yeah, and so in addition to that, we also have a lot of maintenance projects we want to revive. The group is just coming together again after a few years of um, very little participation. So there's some things on the town ball field that need redoing, some painting of the shed, fence needs repairing, the things that we think we can spend the money on. This money includes if you're renting out your portable. It does, yes. So, you know, I don't know. If I'm sorry, I, it's hard for me to hear you guys. So was somebody talking? Not yet. No, so okay. You just asked if it included the port of party rentals, and yes, it does. Okay, so if you look down below here, the color of the tabs, if it's green, it meant we did it already. And I, I think we did this as one of the very early budgets because there was no change. Okay. Um, so sorry, that's why, <laughs> that's why it wasn't on tonight. So, Jan, was that a request for this year? Yes. So we need yes. to add a line in here for stipends? Uh, oh, I guess if that makes sense. So the, we have to cut down the line item to 7,000 and add the stipend of 1,000. So we're not asking for extra. Marsha is a porta potty representative on that. Yeah, you'd have to ask Harry. I don't really know. <laughs> and that's just for the youth sports, correct? The stipend? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Did you hear her? No. He said we have to charge for use, and she said use. We have to charge for use. I like that. It's right. You get 
Yeah, the town getting a two for one too because the Tanya is the stuff, but Jared Jared does the, all the basketball and we got whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And if we get our new uh, pickleball court, then there's also another sport we probably need to go there that that oh this will be paying for. So our money is going to be spread thin. Check your stand. I have I know. They have little fireplaces and only little electric fireplaces. Who doesn't want to spend the evening in the bathroom? Hey, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's like almost as big as my bathroom at home. It's just. Walk to the pickleball courts for your bathroom upgrade experience. Yeah. Okay, that's the end of my show. Oh, here's a good one. Enjoy Thank you. Yeah. Thank Boy, you have any questions? Uh, not, not at the moment. No. Good thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is not going to be as easy as last week's was. <laughs> so, um. Oh, I mean, overall, the total is within a few hundred dollars. I did a lot of juggling to cover new expenses, the software support. I eliminated attending a lot of trainings and meetings and cut back on the expenses for that and the mileage to attend those to cover the expenses for the software support with and the increased postage and postage and whatnot without increasing the overall bottom line. Oh. Don't like it, but what is the last time why advertising included or I did not it's know. whenever there is a bylaw change and I have to submit it to the attorney general, I I when I get the approval, the approval has to be posted twice. Mm -hmm. In the reporter, so mm -hmm. it, it's yeah, okay. and depending on how big the article was and how many articles, the the bill could be two hundred dollars, it could be seven hundred dollars. So mm -hmm. it's it covers the Conway News. That's Anyone have questions on this? Well, I mean, software support jumps out because we don't need prior budget items for Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't, as of this year, for the town clerk, we've added software across right. the board for my departments. Oh. I, Ber Bernie, I'm, I'm sorry. Can you can you put this up on the screen? It is on the it screen. Is. It is, Bernie. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just software support. Right. I, um, I was able to purchase some databases for. Um, Public, rec um, public records requests, vital records, boards and committees, basically ways to make things a whole lot quicker, easier, and more in compliance with regulations and mm -hmm. support. It's, you know, like 495 a year through each database. Yeah. And then I also need to cover the $500 a year for our electronic voters to click in mm -hmm. for the software yeah. support on those that comes out of my budget. Yeah, right. So, and these are things that have just come in the past couple of fiscal years. They, mm -hmm. everything prior to was basically pen and pencil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and that's why I said, I, I mean, I used to attend the majority of the clerk's conferences and I just cut it down to one, maybe two. Mm -hmm. to, balance out those expenses. Mm -hmm.
No, three of the three of the soft three of the packages I have are from LL Data, and it's discounted down. You know, it, it would have been more for one and discounted. You know, ten percent for two, twenty for three. I actually have four packages, but one of them is for dogs, and that comes out of the special revenue fund. Mm -hmm. So, but it's still giving us that twenty percent discount. So, um, the state, unfortunately, I do have software support for elections things, mm -hmm. but the state doesn't reimburse us for any of it, even though some of it's being for, mm -hmm. like the automark that we have to use that no one uses. We're required by the state to use that have this piece of machinery available. And it's a thousand dollars a pop to have that key the card programmed. And they will not, even though they require us to have it, they will not be able to So but that's on the other question. Is there a penalty for not having it? Um, five hundred dollars. It, it's a five hundred dollar fine if you don't have it. Which yes, it's less than the programming fee. But once you get caught violating those kind of ADA requirements, you're under the microscope from that time forward. So, and it's like I don't want to be on the records as violating the ADA compliance. I, I don't. I'd rather do it right and do it legally. <laughs> My my personal corollary to that is uh, less than is illegal is more important. Do you want the town to have to no. pay fines because the chair of the select board suggests I don't have the machine out? No, it is me that they'll be marching out in handcuffs. <laughs> you know, more people might use it if it's one of those fancy ones. <laughs> I don't have any other questions. Do you have any questions? Hello. Uh, well, I, I'm still seeing the old page on the meeting, but I called it up on another screen here. And we're 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 on a we're on 161. Is that the account? Yes. Yeah, I don't have any questions. <laughs> no. Um, Baron, you just put the old one back. Oh no, you should have the next one. Never mind. Sorry. You brought up one. Did you have questions on 161, right? No, I, I, okay. I don't. Okay, sorry. 162 has not changed. It's same old, same old. I'm not going to give the registrars any raises this year. I think I, I gave them each fifty dollars a year last year, and I'm just things are too tight this year. No, but so that's the same. And for 163 on the elections, again, the postage has gone up, but I have vote by mail to deal with. And we're averaging, I think it was like five or 485 vote by mail ballots in the last election. And that's at 84 cents a pop. You know, the, the state pays for the return, they don't pay for the go out. Mm -hmm. So it's 80, you know, so I'm paying almost a dollar an envelope. To, so you sent us 485 that came back or went out? Went out. They went out. They went out. Hard to be paid. Right. <laughs> exactly. Right. Because some of some of those people brought them back on hand. Yeah. Some mailed them back, some didn't, and they just destroyed them and came and voted in person. So I, you know. So I budgeted extra to cover that postage. And again, the software support. Um, I did drop down the office supplies. The office supplies, well, they were a little high. <laughs> and that did, that is where the thousand dollar automark charge used to be. And okay, moved, oh, I, I guess yeah, that. I moved it down into the software support where yeah. it's supposed to be. Yeah, that and then makes sense. yeah, and then we also have the um the support we have for the poll pads that we are using now for town meetings and town elections. But that budget hasn't increased by dollars either. All this fancy stuff. Yeah, hey, uh, Lori, a quick question. Uh, so what do we have for, what election do we have for 2023? 
2023, we are lucky and we only have our local, but we have to be careful because the, the way the fiscal year and the election year, they don't balance. So fiscal year 24 is going to have, let's see. So next year, 23 is well, no, I, it, it's, it's I, the, the elections go calendar year. So I, I'm trying to figure because we have an election in June, and then we have the presidential primaries in March. Those will fall under fiscal year 23. And then fiscal year 24 that we're looking at, we're going to have our locals, the state primaries at the state election. So there'll be three elections under that one. Wait, well, you just said we're in 29, we're at the in, we're latter half. We're in yeah, we're at the latter half of FY 23. So you're yeah. saying that we do we have primaries in March coming? Is that correct? Yes. yes. We have the local election in June and we have the presidential primaries in March. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, in oh, March, Mar oh, no, you mean I'm March. Sorry, of sorry no. my bad. I'm on the wrong year. This year is a light year. This year's a light year. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> we had we had in 23, we had the state in September and November, and now the locals. Yep. 24 will have the presidential, the, yeah. Uh, right, we'll have the, the primary in March and then we'll have the locals and then 25 will have, yeah. So, I mean, we're lucky in the sense with the postage and the software that it kind of divides, mm -hmm. it divides up so it makes it more even throughout the years instead of getting slammed one year and then nothing next. There's there's always going to be two to three elections every year. Mm -hmm. Two or three. Okay. Do we have any further questions, comments for us? I'll take that as a note. Yes. Chris, Bell. You're, you got your head in your hands, like you're thinking something. So that's, your, that's just that's just the the um, <laughs> required budget. Anytime you actually think about I've, what's I've, coming up at town meeting, I know. You I stand up here and say, you know, I cut as much as I could to make it the same as it was, and, and yeah. did my best to keep it yeah. within under five hundred dollars increase for everything. Yeah. So. I unfortunately can't really do much more. Sorry. Maybe the state was skipping ahead to the per cost budget. Which oh, well, I can't help you on that. I can't help you on that. Present that here and at town meeting. All I've done is vote against it at every possible step of the process. <laughs> you can't, unfortunately, not. Oh, I know. It's necessary. I know. We need the, yeah. We need these things. Exactly. But, but Ronnie, is there is there uh, um, was there anything else for for Lori? We before she. No, nope, not on my end. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Have a good night, guys. Thank you. So, so the next is is our Percog assessment. I I have to preface this by saying that I spoke with them today. They will not have final numbers for us until I think it's March 15th. But this is the breakdown that I got today. The only number I'm fairly certain of is the accounting because I did meet with Bob Dean about that. I'm looking because some of this is actually meaningful to help. So yeah, so Lori, yours is gonna be, um, and I can send that to you, this one right here for the Board of Health. Right, right, the health services, perfect. Yep. But we, so, have, more than, we have more than that now. Yeah, so okay. no, yours is this is last year, so it's up by you know 400. Bucks. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah, no, it's it's not you know, but they all went up a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so okay, so that's why I have the total here so that everybody can see how much we pay in total to FERCOG, but the Board of Health picks up the health services portion, so this is what comes out of this actual budget. Does, 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 do you know if this that we're looking at includes the health insurance increase across the board for everybody at Burkhock? Well, this is their assessment, so it must. That's and, the one that just but, changed two weeks but, ago. 
yeah. as I as I just said, these are not the final numbers. This was the best I could get out of them today. Veronique, Ver can I ask you to turn off your screen sharing and turn it back on because I'm frozen on, on back. Yeah. Okay. Now turn it back on if you don't mind. Mm. Not seeing anything. Okay. Where are you physically, Veronique? <laughs> uh, well, we can we can right. see the screen share here. Yeah. yeah. You can see it in your Zoom meeting. Yes, yeah, we can see it in the Zoom meeting. Yeah. Okay. That's all. The problems on my end, I guess. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'll drop off a hard copy in the room. I'm I'm going to join the meeting in another another way. So, uh, Veronique, let me in in a minute or two, okay? Okay. Okay. Thanks. It was not so, like, so, the percentage overall Congress represents about what nine percent of this current like, Congress. No, we're three percent. Three percent. Three percent. Yeah. yeah. So we have as much much bite as they. Uh, <laughs> yes, and and it's not not only are we just three percent, but that. The, the budget vote was 30 to 1, and I was the one. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, like, they, they try really hard to make sure that I get one comment and only one, and that they move on. The total amount that the, that the group spends doing the budget, soup to nuts, 15 minutes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and then, and, and it's, it's preceded by this dog and pony whatever thing, and then it follows this, like, the, the, the most inane like presentations that just have nothing but and all they do is like run out the clock to keep even coming in the budget i swear well, there's 30, um, 26 towns in franklin county which town yep. greenfield and orange get extra votes they they that those two combined are a majority and they always vote together and they always just crush all the little bit yeah. of and um, but you know that the way that they so first of all the services that they provide for us are services that we absolutely need. I mean, in all these different areas, and as and the services are good, like they're they're good services. Which um, I don't have any complaints about any specific service or person providing that service. Just I have that compliments for all that. Mm -hmm. The problem is that the way that this group does budgeting is the least transparent and most hocus pocus voodoo-y thing going anywhere. Um, and basically they can make the budget anything that they want to make, any, because there's so many, mm -hmm. like, there was a chance, the, the assessments instead of a two, whatever, a two, what is it? this is a three or 4% increase, instead yeah. of, it should have, it could have been a double digit decrease. Instead, they decided to expand the program and offer a new, they're creating a new um, REMA, Franklin Regional Emergency Management, at the cost of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. And they're going to do training. And they, and you know, so I'm, I'm, the, I'm the emergency management director of this town. I speak with the ones in the other town. There's not a single emergency management director in a single one of those towns that I'm aware of. That thinks that this is a good idea to have more another group offering trainings. Mm -hmm. And why would any of us do trainings with them when NEMA, Massachusetts, yeah. gives really good trainings for free? Mm -hmm. And if something like me, we did a training with NEMA, they um uh, even just a conversation, they said, Oh, your radio thing isn't working. We'll send up the state radio technician and we'll still go that. And they actually have certain they fix the they. Whatever. So if we do trainings with MEMA, with with FREMA, and whatever, that would reveal that we need. So they would call MEMA. Yeah. Right. And and, and sure. why would we establish relationships with these people when we need the relationship with the state? That gives, that it, mm -hmm. it's just massive duplication of services. Yeah. And the other thing is that the. When this was initially proposed, I was like, good, because we had a tornado here and there was a couple of things that fell through the cracks mm -hmm. that that FEMA didn't pick up reimbursement for our highway costs and our guardrail costs because it fell below the threshold. Mm -hmm. And and there was no reimbursement for private landowners to clear up trees. Mm -hmm. So the initial thing was this was going to be 
uh, a pot of money to reimburse the communities for the things that, and that is now switched to be a jobs act. Yeah, yeah, and, and um, that that provides us no benefits, right? And, and costs, costs more. A ton of dough, yeah. um, and there's nothing we can do about it because Greenfield Norris thinks it's a great idea, mm -hmm. and um, so like I this group, I feel like I'm a hostage that we're hostages to, mm -hmm. but at the same time we need. We need what our hostage taking provides for us. So, yeah. so um, I'm the worst person to present this budget. Um, but, but, but um, you know, uh, but I'm still asking everybody to pass it because we need their stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Really, Gary, did uh, get a big grant? Well, so they, you know, they, they're like, but they got a hundred and sixty-four thousand dollar grant for the first year, which is half of the program's cost for the first year. Yeah. Um, but you know, and you know, the other part too that needs to be said is that they gave all of their employees. Everybody got at least a four percent raise. Most got a six percent raise, and a lot got an eight percent raise. And you know, and when I raise my hand and say the town's revenue increased 1.9 percent, like you have to have some relationship right. to the communities that you yeah, sure. are part that that you represent, and they say no, we don't. We are not a town. We compete with Boston for our talent. We have to be competitive with Boston. And that's, that's the arms race in the town. And yeah. so you know. Um, yeah. okay. That's in, in their mind that, you know, that, that's their justification for that. And this is year after year after year of increases that are double and triple what all of the towns are able to do. And they, they drive up all of our costs. Oh. And, you know, we need their service. Yeah. 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 And uh, do we get competent help and advisement that number, from the that firm? That they came up with, the 50, so the, whatever, a total of two, that is like so exquisitely massaged mm -hmm. and like calculated mm -hmm. as what's the maximum size of the pill that they'll all swallow. Right. right. And like it is no real. Uh, Phil, uh, Phil, in your yeah. uh, esteemed uh, opinion, do we get competent advisement and help from the FERCOG for the services that we contract for? percent yes well what did you you said yes 100 percent yes 100 percent yes <laughs> so there's no question about their competency correct what you are objecting to i i mean this is convoluted the way this is done here because they abolish the county uh system uh right. for reasons that are you know known to the folks around boston and um the only thing that I think is interesting is to look in other jurisdictions and like New York State or something and see what what those counties are providing and stuff. But that's besides the point. The the my that was the what I really want to know is, yes, there's no issue with the quality of the services we get. And that's important. It seems to me and I don't have the uh, so our assessment is 55. Is that what it was? It's not back on the screen there or something like that. It's, we well, pay? right now it's 58, but it's going to be more than that because that, that it's always more than that. Um, <laughs> okay, 58. As, as soon as they tell you it's not final yet, ah, trust me I when I tell you it's not going down between now and when it's final. Okay. Well, here, you know, the thing over there is that probably the bulk of their budget is human resource, as you, as, um, as you know, you mentioned that four, six, eight percent uh, increases, and um, honestly, you know, and Veronique knows this. I'm I'm facing a company that's got a nine and a half percent increase that is not so easy to just you turn your back and say, well, I'm going somewhere else because there may not be a somewhere else to go to. So. I, I don't know what to say here, except that uh, it seems, or is that number, do we get charged, I forget, like uh, per item for other things that are not in here? You know, in other no, words, we get a, a quarterly assessment for this. Okay. For these, so, because these are all the services broken out here. Yes. Yes. So it's not like, uh, let's see. 
uh, well, building inspector services. Where is okay FCC inspection yep. program? Suppose there's double the normal number of permits re requested. So does that number go up? No. So it's a flat rate for no matter how many building permits we get, we we have have them look at. Correct, and it's and that FCC is more than just the building permits. They're looking at other things as well, electrical, plumbing, you know, that all that kind of stuff. Well, that's kind of a deal, then, isn't it? <laughs> I most, think. if not, and Roy, most if not all of these line items under under the assessment line is are, are con, we have separate contracts with Brooktog for each of them, so. Um, we do have, uh, you know, we, we we know what we're paying for in advance. We just don't know what a lot of their internal costs are. Their their your your, your beef is with the budgeting process itself. So yeah, not yeah. necessarily. With, uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. One. I'm just looking. Here the town share with their new with their growth forecast. Yeah, I mean it's dark. It's the you know there's towns that. that that there's towns that were saying that they're looking at layoffs, they're looking at you know, um, you know, wage freezes, yeah. um, et cetera. Yeah. And um, yeah. you know, but, but but you know, for, for and, and we're one of the heaviest users of Burkai of all the towns. Yeah. Most towns only use them for half less than half the things that we do. The eight six four percent increase. They did. Yeah, the board. Yeah. I don't. I I don't know what to say. And I'm like when when I was first appointed this, I I remember like saying you know go, going out and saying yeah I'm the I'm the Furca I'm the I'm the Furca counselor for the town of Conway if whatever. Now I'm like. <laughs> and it's true the one time that i attended that annual meeting bills um said that they were very pleased <laughs> that, that it was me <laughs> 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 I, you know it's an, an, another group that wants me to submit my questions in writing in advance <laughs> that's how you know you're popular yeah um, so is anyone on the governor's council or the new administration? Yeah, I don't I don't know. I know uh the the, the person that had so much to do with creating Burkhog, the is uh, from Ashfield, the Bill uh former select board member. Anyway, he resigned. And uh what that was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he retired, I guess. Yeah. Perlman, Bill Perlman. That's it. Wow. Well, he, he had always well, had I, he had always had ideas how to expand. Well, does that, I does I I honestly I I would not want to see us go back to the day we had our own building inspector, we had our own accountant, we had I mean there were problems across the board, and so. Yeah. They've solved a lot of problems. I mean, you know, I I, I don't know what to say. And in the, in the scope of things, it doesn't seem like yeah. that, you know, that heavy a burden. I grant grant you, Phil. I know in principle you've got some some issues there, but when you look at the dollar amount, it doesn't seem all that much compared, you know, compared to what it buys in the marketplace. You know, yeah, that's that is the dilemma. It's hard. It's hard to really, really get fired up about it. The, the budgetary impact is relatively well, minor. Yeah. Yeah. Many towns have discussed about like a split tax rate town that have like the contacts for people with second homes. Have any of the uh, way up hill towns like Yeah, there's a bunch of towns that are doing stuff about that. Um, and they're doing um, what seems to be popular is the towns doing a split tax rate for like the village. Uh -huh. um, and which which isn't for uh, if you have like we could it's it's always an option for us too the the um the historic part of the village or whatever could have its own tax rate um what well, what would yeah. be the purpose of that oh they come yeah. to the land <laughs> and revenue and, and, and charge yeah. somebody more money and a, well, a wait, lot so of it, honestly is that it, it it's it filters out a lot of like permanent residents versus um second home residents sure of course um so so you so wait so you're gonna 
you're going to give the village a break on their taxes and the rest of us not? Is that what you're saying? I mean, if they get a break, the rest of us have to pay more. <laughs> yes. The theory being that if you can afford a second home. Well, second home is one thing. What if you have your primary home, like the one I'm in at the moment, but it's three miles from that village. <laughs> yeah, well, we would have to figure out a, an exception for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I know. We'll I mean, gerrymander I, it. Yeah. No, but I, listen, <laughs> I, I think it's always mm -hmm. worth, um, uh, you know, the discussion about how to how to uh, increase the revenue, ba the tax base in the town. There's no question, and and the village is a big uh, part of that. But usually, it's not how to reduce the rate. Anyway. That's another discussion. We had a committee. I don't know if we still have a committee doing that, uh, but it, you know, it's the sewer system and all that stuff. So, yep. <laughs> so. I adjourned the finance committee. Well done. Thank you. So, okay. So we're not doing that. All right. So, uh, so, so done. the assessor, the assessor's budget is uh, next week. Okay. So, so Veronique, we, ha I have not. I, I didn't hear what Phil said oh, yeah. when I heard a I T. I I have not had a chance to revamp that based on you know what I what I told what I mentioned to you. Okay, well next week we're doing um assessors because they're redoing their budget, but it's also going to be all the highway budgets. So it's probably going to be pretty packed with that discussion. Well, so maybe we can put it the week after. Yeah, that would be great. And, you know, because I have to investigate alternatives and see see what the heck this stuff, you know, what I can do to control the costs on it, because okay. I'm, not, I'm not a happy camper, I'll tell you that. So anyway, um, good night. Thank you, everybody. Have a lovely, lovely rest of the week. You too. Bye. Thanks, Roy. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Well, um, new business. Set the time for annual town meeting. So brief little history lesson. Uh, three years ago, three years ago, uh, for the first 250-something years of town, the meeting was weeknights. It was always Monday night, started at 7.30. Um, uh, it was, wasn't even halfway over by 11 o'clock every time. Mm -hmm. And in the last, and, and then they would cram half the meeting in a half an hour. And we would always vote for the most ridiculous things in the world at 11.30 at night when everybody wanted to go home. Um, and so everybody, everybody, it seemed like the whole town was like, change this to a weekend. And so we mended the bylaw to make it Saturdays at one o'clock. First time we had it Saturday at one o'clock, all these people came up and said, this takes our whole, this ruins our day. It's the middle of the day, it's the whole day. It can't just be in the morning. So we changed the bylaw to make it 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, and- uh, Well, actually, that, it, it, was was, that? it wasn't that you changed it to be 10 o'clock, it was you changed it so the select board may set the time. Oh, right. And so we set it for 10 o'clock and it seemed like, it seemed like the, the same exact people that complained about it being Monday night and at one o'clock were complaining about it being at 10 o'clock. Um, the, the thing is that uh, a, lot of, a lot of the people, I remember people still saying that they liked it at 10 o'clock, parents of children that are in, you know, that really liked it because that um, they, you're, at, you're out of there by one o'clock and you, you whatever. Um, and it, it, it didn't take up the whole day. All the people at the school really liked it because they just get to get, they're in there at 10 o'clock and they're out of there at 10.30. Uh, um, but I, to, to me, this is one of those classic damn if you do damn, it doesn't matter what we could, we could doesn't matter what time you pick, it is going to be over. So um, I'll just leave this decision. I'll just vote yes to whatever you two like. We have to decide now. Well, I brought it up because people are asking me. Yeah. Well, I mean, how much should we spend on the signs that say one o'clock? I mean, I know that's just a small expense, but 
because we had a bunch of those like you know semi-permanent signs printed last year we have five of them but we could certainly put a little slap a little thing on there that says 10 instead yeah. of one yeah. so <laughs> yeah Thank you. The thing is, this is, although it, although last june was was um was, was not a very hot day that in the past like the, the first time we did it at one o'clock, um, it was it was, it was a no. The, the first that was an indoor, um, and it was hot. That was yeah. Um, and everybody was sweating. So I thought just so just for that reason, June, um, if it is a hot sunny day, ten o'clock is way more comfortable in that gym than one o'clock. Um, Not only that, but a lot of people were saying on Saturday they wanted to be able to hay. That's going to happen after the sun's been up and it's dried out. So. If you put it in the middle of the day at one o'clock, it really puts a damper on your day. Yeah. I, I definitely vote for that. Is that conditional? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, all in favor of 10 a.m. All right. It's unanimous. It's 10 a.m., Ronnie. Thank you. Excellent. Next year, it'll probably be right. new. Yeah. <laughs> just, to, just to mix it up. Yeah. A um, uh, couple of appointments in the historical commission. Anybody have any objection? No, I think they did a very thorough job figuring <laughs> out. It's really impressed with their research. So I moved to appoint Jane Reefor um, to the historical commission for a term ending 6:30:25, and Jane Horseman for a term ending 6:30:24. And we second that. In favor? Aye. 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 Um, on. Okay. Items not anticipated 48 hours. So this is actually a legit use of this uh, because yesterday there was social media posts by a town employee that are um, has been brought to many of our attention. So the town has a social media policy. Um, and so, you know, um, what, what I guess this is here so that you all are given a copy of the policy and a copy of one, just one of the posts from yesterday. There's multiple posts from today as well by the individual. <clears throat> Not naming the individual or the committee or anything right now. Um, because there's a process, there's a process that um, which is to schedule this for next week and to list it on the agenda by the employee's name. Um, and uh, and, and to to have a hearing, pretty much a hearing regarding whether or not the posts are in violation of the policy. And then the select board has a bunch of, the select board can choose to do nothing, to issue a warning, to issue uh, a censure. Um, and those are the, the possible remedies because um, Because that's 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 what this life would be. In. So, um, so that would be that would be my recommendation. Would be to, to put this on the agenda and for next week and deal with this proper. The employee would be noticed, and the employee has the opportunity to bring a lawyer and to make it a private executive session upon their request. If, if they do not make that request, then it is an open meeting. So that's. Um, if you have any questions, I can sort of answer them in a limited way. But how do we see the other post? Do we have to go into that website? Um, they will be provided, Veronica will provide them for us all. But they're, that's really what it is. It's just the post. There's no. Without, without any, there's no investigation into. The, I'm sorry, what am I providing? I couldn't hear that. <laughs> all the rest of the posts. We just have oh, the one. Oh. Today. Okay. So that's, yeah. Um, 
and, and it's just a strict limited view. It is the post in violation of the policy. That's it. Just does not go to the probity uh, uh, of the post itself or whether or not every single thing in there is true, false, either, both, whatever. It doesn't, yeah, okay. it's just cut and dry. Okay. Um, so is there a motion? Um, or it's not really a motion, but um, yeah, this is just, you know, we, okay. need, we needed to do it this way so that we could even just make sure that everybody has it on the same page. Yeah, I totally Just in terms of process. Right. I feel like we should follow up on the board. Totally. As if there's any other way. I, well, yeah, I know. <laughs> that sounds good. All right. Now, the administrator update. Yes. Yeah, so um, I know you all have it in front of you. Just a couple things I'll highlight. Um, I had not even realized that we had this much money in our recycling dividends program. So it's $11,111.04. And that's a lot of money that we can spend on many different items um, up at the transfer station. So I wanted to bring that to your attention so we could have a discussion about how the board would like to spend the, that those funds. My preferred alternative was not listed in the <laughs> pop permissive uses. Yes. Which is, I, I thought a lobster bait for the whole town would be nice. <laughs> As a former DEP employee, I can tell you that's not going to pass muster. Uh, I, so. Although they might enjoy being invited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and I do, I really, actually, I wish Roy were still here because Chris and I, um, had the draft report from Northeast IT who did the cybersecurity um, assessment for us. And I'll be honest with you, um, our system really got, you know, flying colors, high marks. We're doing really, really well, um, which is really, really good to know. So um, I'll have to make sure to let Roy know about that. But um, so I guess the question will be if, if the board decides they would like to have Sean Weaver, who was the gentleman who gave us the report, um, you know, actually present to the board at a meeting and, you know, give you more details on that. It's up to you. So, uh, <laughs> um, so other than that, just it was just some webinars and meetings that I've been to and um, that I wanted to let everybody know that on February 28th, we're going to hold a ribbon cutting and celebration. Thank you for Mass DOT and all of the other people who helped get that temporary bridge in place. It's just incredible to me that November 4th, it got shut down and February 16th, we had a temporary bridge. So I know that um, Representative Blay and Senator Mark have already RSVP'd. They will be there. Francisca Hemming from MassDOT will be there. Um, and I'm just, I'm very eager to thank them all for having made this happen so quickly. What's the time on that? Noon, 12 noon. It's at noon. And, you know, part of the issue is that we're now seeing that it may be snowing four inches that day, but I figure we're dealing with DOT, so <laughs> we can weather the weather. What you didn't mention is that we we have the town has acquired giant comic scissors. Oh mm -hmm. yes, yes, like four foot tall scissors. I I, I did get novelty scissors because yeah. the ones I provided for the highway facility ribbon cutting did not serve as well. Oh, Are these actually cut, or do you have to be like a pre oh, a pre score? They, they're supposed to cut, but when it's that big, you really can't get left. I think they, all they're going to do is just sort of like gum it a little bit. But I'm, we'll say it's scissoring like the big Lebowski and that exactly fever drink. That's exactly what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you also say we have a fourth applicant for the sheriff position. Sheriff. Yes, we did. Yeah, yes, so we have. <laughs> <laughs> we have four yes. applicants for the police chief. One came in on Friday, which was the last day. Mm -hmm. uh, city boy, comment. 
Okay. All right. Um, select board member. Uh, anybody with any comments or concerns? No. Is there any mail? Yes, ma'am. So, next meeting, February 27th, uh, six days from today, Monday night at 6 p.m. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you, everybody.